course, uh, we come in in name and in our Fagans video. Welcome to another exciting video, in this case part 8 of my game system design video series. In this video, I will attempt to analyse artillery and aircraft rules and determine some basic guidelines in their creation for use in micro-armour figure gaming rules. Let us first deal with artillery fire. Artillery fire is normally indirect, that is, the shell travels along an arc to its target. The first pertinent question we need to ask concerning artillery fire is, will it get its own phase and game mechanics, or will it be embedded in the standard of fire game mechanics and phases? While it's possible to place all artillery fire in the standard fire phases, it's wise to remove some types of artillery fire from that phase and place it in its own special phase. This is in order to reduce the complexity of the standard fire phase. It must be noted that if your game system is very simple, this may not be required. Pre-planned fire, such as area fire and interdiction fire, is not affected by any activity on the playing area and can be conducted in a special artillery phase. Hydro battery fire, as it normally targets off playing area artillery at enemy artillery, can also be placed into its own special artillery phase. Even area fire, which is not pre-planned, can be placed here, as area fire normally consists of identifying a location, experiencing a delay, and fire is conducted against the location, not an actual enemy element. Only a direct fire support cannot be placed into a special phase, as it occurs in conjunction with movement and direct fire. Area fire, or indirect fire against a location, is not affected by anything which occurs on the playing area. A player can pre-plan this type of fire, or during the game go through a process of identifying a location, spending sending area fire information to the artillery, and then the artillery conducts fire against that location. As area fire targets location, not an enemy element, it can be conducted in its own special phase. If designers add rules which cause the fall of fire to move or fall randomly, this additional complexity is best kept in its own separate phase. Should be noted, area fire can also include smoke barrages. Interdiction fire has to be laid before any movement occurs. As interdiction fire is triggered by enemy movement, the actual interdiction fire combat would occur in the enemy's movement phase. But the setting down an interdiction fire location, determining if it's off target or not, has to be conducted before the movement phase. This is normally pre-planned, although it's possible for this to be initiated during a game using the same procedures as area fire after a delay. Basically, you target a location. Counter battery fire is triggered or occurs based on enemy artillery or enemy indirect fire. If the enemy conducts artillery or indirect fire, this can be located. This uses a process of radar detection, sound raging or flash ranging. The exact location of the enemy artillery can thus be identified, or at least the approximate location. Once this occurs, the actual counter battery fire occurs. This is best conducted in its own phase, as the locating process represents non-standard activity. It would normally occur in the game turn after the enemy indirect fire, which triggers it, so some tracking or game system tracking is required. But more importantly, as the target is often off the playing area or deep behind the front line, it does not affect activity occurring on the front line of the playing area. Artillery fire which specifically targets enemy elements, normally observed by a forward observer who calls down fire and corrects it, does affect activity on the playing area. This type of artillery or indirect fire must be conducted in the standard fire phase. While it operates in a similar manner to indirect fire, it has a direct effect on other activities on the playing area during the standard fire phase. More importantly, you are targeting an enemy element, not a location, and it occurs immediately in support of some other type of activity. Examples include mortar fire supporting a close assault. Let's now look at aircraft support. In this case, the firing element is transitory. It only appears to fire from the sky and then leaves. Once again, we must ask ourselves if this should have its own game mechanics and phases, or if it should be embedded in the standard game mechanics and phases. Most aircraft activity, while able to support ground operation, is not directly linked with ground operations. Air support is called in by an element on the playing area, but when the aircraft is launching its attack, it is the aircraft which is doing the observing and fire combat. There is no forward observer calling in corrections to any fire. As a result, all enemy aircraft activities can be removed from the standard fire phase and placed in its own phases. 
It should be noted that helicopters can act as an aircraft and can follow the same aircraft rules, or can act as a ground element, in which case it's treated as a standard ground element. Examples of the former would be troop transport missions, and examples of the latter would be conducting direct fire against an enemy element. While I feel air-to-air -air combat should be abstracted away, rules such as Lightning, War, Red Storm do a nice job simplifying it to the point where it adds a lot of variability and has almost no downside. In this case, air-to-air -air simply represents opposing aircraft negating each other, with those aircraft simply being removed. This is an excellent example of rules which add some benefit or bling, and at the same time having minimal negative effect. Comparing this with the Core Commander, where the air-to-air -air combat system is incredibly complex and time-consuming affair, is also very striking. Aircraft which survive air-to-air -air combat and are on the playing area can then be subject to ground-to-air combat. This has no direct effect on the playing area, so can be placed in a separate phase. The only record keeping is noting when a ground element has conducted ground-to-air combat, as this could affect observation, movement and fire combat in the standard fire phases. As the number of elements affected would be small, this is probably not a major issue. While it's possible air to ground combat could be used to directly affect activities on the playing area, this is not common. When aircraft arrives, or the exact timing of their arrival, or even the target can be so variable no commander would coordinate aircraft and ground movement that closely. As a result, air to ground combat can be kept separate. Once all aircraft activities are resolved, the aircraft are all removed, which ensures the playing area does not get cluttered with elements not directly related to activities in the standard fire phases. There is one complexity to note. Early in the war, the Germans and later the Western Allies often used light observation aircraft to locate enemy forces and bring down fire support or call in air support. These are the only aircraft which would normally be present on the playing area during a standard fire phase. But as they would rarely number more than one per side, this once again is not a major issue. By conducting activity which is not directly related to moving and conducting fire combat with ground-based elements on the playing area, you allow players to solely focus on these activities when those phases occur. When there is no artillery or aircraft activities, these non-core artillery and aircraft phases can easily be skipped. This is an example when creating special phases does increase speed of play. Now we do come to a single caveat. If you're dealing with a very simple game system, such as Kiss Rommel or a figure game conversion of board game, artillery and aircraft can easily be built into the standard game mechanics. A good example is the SPI Modern Battles rules, which only possess a single combat phase for each player. Aircraft and artillery can simply be added to a combat. In this case, there are minimal special rules. But when dealing with anything more complex, dividing these activities out into their own phases is often the optimum solution. And so we come to an end of my part 8 of this game system on game system design. In this case, covering aircraft and artillery. Alle guten Dien, komm zu einem Ende.